Hello children. My name is Florence Nightingale. You've probably heard of me. I was a nurse in the 1800s. Would you like to hear my story? Well, would you? Very well. I was born in 1820 in the Italian city of Florence. Although my parents were English and I grew up in England, in Matlock, Derbyshire and Romsey in Hampshire. My family were very wealthy. My sister, Parthenope and I had our own tutor. We didn't go to school like you probably do. When I was a girl, I loved reading about places around the world and about science. My tutor said that I was very clever. I knew that when I grew up, I didn't just want to get married and be someone's wife. I wanted to go out into the world and do something important. I decided that I wanted to become a nurse. My parents were not very happy with the idea. I was determined to be a nurse. It was the only thing I ever wanted to be. I got my first nursing job in the 1850s. I was shocked by how dirty the hospital was. So I made sure everything was clean. And do you know what? Because the hospital was cleaner, fewer patients died. People got to hear about my ideas and in 1854, I was offered a job by the government. Dear Miss Nightingale, I have heard that you are a very good nurse with lots of ideas to help patients. Many British soldiers are fighting in the Crimean War. When they are wounded, they are taken to hospitals near the battlefield. There are no nurses to help these poor soldiers. Could you train nurses and bring them here to help? This will be a difficult job, but you are needed desperately. We hope that you will say yes, don't you know? Yours sincerely, Sidney Herbert, Secretary of War. I was honoured. This was a chance to make a real difference to people who are ill and suffering. I wanted to get started straight away and gathered 38 nurses to travel with me. The battlefields of the Crimea were a long way from England. It took many weeks for us to get there. We didn't actually swim, we travelled by ship. When my nurses and I arrived at the hospital in Scutari, we could not believe how bad the conditions were. The injured soldiers did not have clean water to drink. The bedsheets, the bandages, the floors and walls, everything was filthy. Flies buzzed everywhere and rats and cockroaches ran between the beds. The smell was dreadful. It wasn't a surprise that so many soldiers were dying in the hospital. I'm not having this, I thought. I knew exactly what to do. I got organised. Quickly, there is no time to lose. We have to help these poor soldiers. Listen very carefully, I will say this only once. Go sweep the floors and throw away the rubbish. Scrub the walls and floors and make everything sparkle. There must be nowhere for germs to hide. Get clean bandages for everyone. Burn the dirty bandages. Change those filthy sheets for a freshly washed one. Bring clean water for the men to drink and good plain food for them to eat. Within weeks, my nurses had transformed the hospital. By keeping everything clean, tidy and organised, we made sure that the soldiers no longer suffered and many more got better and were able to go home. I knew that my ideas would work. Being clean and tidy helped to stop germs from spreading. But that was only part of my job. I also had to look after the poor soldiers in my care. My nurses and I made sure that they had their medicines, we kept their bandages clean, and we helped them when they were in pain. For some soldiers, night time could be a sad and lonely time, so I carried my lantern on the wards and talked to any soldiers who needed my help. The soldiers started to call me the Lady of the Lamp. Queen Victoria noticed my work. She sent me this wonderful brooch as a reward for my work in the Crimea. It is called the Nightingale Jewel. When I returned to Britain, I set up Nightingale Training School for Nurses at St Thomas's Hospital in London. There I taught hundreds of nurses how to do their job properly and made sure that my ideas about cleanliness and good organisation were spread to all hospitals. I hope that you enjoyed my story. Goodbye.